The Dallas Mavericks had been surviving without Luka Doncic for four games, and it looked like they'd make it five when they took a 30-point lead late in the third quarter against the Toronto Raptors. We'd already seen Nick Nurse get unconventional with his defense the past two seasons, and it was at this moment he dug deep into his bag of tricks to so completely change the complexion of this game, we got the biggest comeback in a regular season game in nine years. If you're wondering how Dallas built such a huge lead, it was a balanced attack from behind the three-point line, as five players hit at least two three-pointers led by Chris Stapp's Porzingis. He shook free on this nice play as he hands off to Tim Hardaway Jr. before getting his own flare screen and the opening to catch and shoot. And at the end of the second quarter, we got a real highlight as he sidesteps a defender off the dribble and lets one fly from way downtown. In the third, it was weird that twice the Raptors failed to figure out who was guarding Jalen Brunson. Fred Van Vliet is late getting over there in transition as he splashes this one, and then on the inbounds, Lowry has no idea who he's supposed to be guarding, and it's an easy handoff back to the inbounder, and Brunson gets another open look from the same spot. So here we are to start the fourth quarter, and Nick Nurse finds his team in a 23-point hole. So he pulls out something that we'd normally see in high school, called the Diamond and One Press. It has that name because the players form this exact shape across the full court, and the two wings can play this one of two ways. Either allow the pass to the corner so they can trap with the man guarding the inbounder, or they can face guard and not allow the pass to get in. The one place you're not supposed to allow the ball is the middle on the first pass, but the Mavs cut Powell to the free throw line and here comes the trap. The top of the diamond is called the rover and he guards the area immediately in front of the ball handler while the weak side wing takes the middle. You can't see him, but the one guy back's main job is not to let anyone get behind him. If the ball is swung, they want to trap again, which is difficult for anyone playing Rondé Hollis Jefferson's spot. Lowry is reading the ball handler's eyes and ready to rove, and when DeLon Wright sees Boucher coming up above the three-point line, this should have been a pass to Kleba for a dunk. Instead, it sits up too high, is off target, and allows both Boucher and Lowry to get there in time. Tons of contact by Lowry doesn't get called, and they force the turnover. The Raptors come down quickly, break into a Lowry-Boucher pick and roll, and get two free throws to begin whittling the lead away. Remember, in order to press, you have to actually score to force the inbounds. The Mavs screen the strong side wing and allow Seth Curry to get a catch behind the defense. They easily break it, the D is out of position and allows Powell a drive to the hoop and a shooting foul. When Kleba misses the easy dunk, the Raptors race back down 5 on 4 and find Terrence Davis in the corner for the 3, allowing him to set up the press again. But wait, they forgot to get into it for a couple of seconds. This brain fart actually works for them as it allows the ball to be inbounded below the free throw line and when they spring the trap here, they get the deflection and with no one back to protect the hoop, they get the layup. After a timeout, let's see what Rick Carlisle draws up. The guards draw the wings out wide, then they cut Powell to the middle for the ball. Ideally, he'd find a quick pass up court, but he does get going and the aggressiveness of the defense works against them as they foul. The Raptors stay in the press, looking to trap the first pass, and this time it's Powell who is too aggressive as he gets worried about the trap. He lowers the shoulder and commits the obvious offensive foul. The Raptors run that same Lowry Boucher pick and roll. Kleba contains okay, but also gets away with way too much contact on the shot, but Boucher manages to hit it anyway. They press again, and this is what you'd expect five pros to do to a full court press. Despite the trap, they cut Brunson through the middle for the ball, and the weak side wing and rover can trap this, but Brunson makes a great pass up court, it's a two on one, and the Mavericks get the dunk. With a 15 point deficit, the Raptors press again, face guarding the cutters, which leaves the middle open and the Mavs handle this fine, up until the point where the open corner three point shot gets completely erased by the high flying Boucher. About a minute later, the lead is still a robust 18 when the Raptors again run the same pick and roll. This time, the refs overlook what appears to be an obvious goaltend as the ball is still in the cylinder, but it allows the press to set up again. They get another good trap deep near the baseline, and this pass gets too close to the sideline, forcing Seth Curry to balance on one leg and throw this back across the court. This is an easy steal, and with this shot, you have to imagine the basketball gods are firmly on the Raptors' side. They press again, and the main job of the wing is not to get beat sideline. He compounds the problem by fouling. 
The three-point shot from Lowry became instrumental in the comeback as he comes off the ball screen and scoots behind the line to knock down this one to cut it to 10. After another Dallas timeout, they crisscross the guards to open up the middle and then throw it back behind the wing. Getting the ball there generally kills the press and the Mavericks are able to set up their offense but ultimately don't score. Lowry comes back down off another pick and roll and just steps back to let one fly with a hand in his face. No matter. But in the hysteria of the great shot, they forget to press. Doesn't hurt them as they get back in position and defend in the half court. After another free throw cuts the lead to five, they've got plenty of time to get into position. Notice how Lowry steps up to take away the middle pass, forcing the catch below the free throw line, triggering the trap. The Mavs do a nice job to handle it, then release the pressure with a diagonal centering pass. However, there is very little time for the offense to run a play after all of that, and while they can't get the finish on the nice skip and attack off the catch, this was too much penetration and it lets KP sneak in there for the tip dunk. Here's a mistake by Dallas to let the Raptors roll the ball up and save valuable seconds. Lowry patiently waits for the ball screen he wants and check the hesitation as he gets below his man, skips back towards the three-point line that lures his man out of the way and then floats it in, takes the contact and gets the foul. Check the footwork on this one. He hops with his right foot forward to allow him to hit the brakes, then a backward gallop into a wide split and an explosion back to the hoop for the quick release. The made free throw allows the press to set up again, and another good centering pass relieves the pressure. But I just don't get this alignment. Why is KP on the same side as Hardaway? He should be on the left block, where Hardaway could take one dribble and lob it up for a dunk. Instead, they draw a non-shooting foul and ultimately don't score. With Lowry just taking complete control out of the pick and roll, he sweeps in the layup and here comes the press, down two. Another relatively easy break when the pass is allowed to be made in the middle. They then try to run it in the half court with the trap near the half court line, but Terrence Davis is late covering the middle. This should be an easy two points, but the one in the diamond in one is Chris Boucher, and he breaks up the alley-oop pass. The Mavericks should be kicking themselves for allowing a cut off of one of the most common sideline out-of-bounds plays there is in the NBA. Back screening the inbounder, a nice find by Davis in the backdoor cut, and another layup allows them to get in position to press again. I like how Hardaway Jr. drags the press over to the left, then they cut Finney Smith to the middle, taking Davis with him, allowing the snapback pass to Curry with an open floor in front of him. Over pursuit into the front court leaves the weak side open and Brunson gets right by the closeout for the easy 12-footer. With this non-shooting foul but two free throws for the bonus, the Raptors pull within one point and call off the press, willing to try their hand at conventional defense the last five minutes. Lowry continued to light it up from downtown after Toronto had taken the lead. Pulling up from deep in transition and then again off the pick and roll going to his left from five feet behind the line. At this point, it felt like the Mavs' spirit had been broken. But they battle back behind the handoff to Brunson who steps through on Lowry and drops it in on the way to the floor. The refs struggled to get this one right, however, considering Brunson's use of his right hand to literally push Lowry out of the way. Boucher then trails Porzingis to the wing on this out-of-bounds play. Check how he turns the wrong way facing the baseline, allowing the backdoor cut. Brunson's pass was off, preventing the easy dunk, but the foul yields two points from the free throw line. Down one, the Raptors understand they need to get the best shot they can as quickly as they can. With the screen set this high, Lowry's man has room to go under, but Hardaway never called out the screen. To make matters worse, he gets blown by like a statue, forcing KP to help. Nice find to the cutting Boucher, and the Raptors take the lead once again. Remember how I said when you're losing, you need to get the best shot as quickly as you can, since the clock is working against you? Well, the Mavericks and Rick Carlisle completely screw this up, deciding to wind the clock down before going for the last shot. This is coaching criminality, as Brunson inexplicably picks up his dribble just as the ball screen is being set. While they end up with a look from 20 feet, it's heavily contested, and now that it's a miss, there's no time left for any hope besides a 75-foot shot. It's nowhere close, and the Raptors complete the biggest comeback in recent memory utilizing a full-court press, something more teams should be trying even when they're knocked down by huge deficits. And Nick Nurse continues to blaze the path towards a new way of defending in the NBA, which really isn't new at all when you come to think about it.